often deal with is what do coaches say or do between periods to affect performance, to, to create empathy, to get them on track to peak performance. You know, and I just wrote between periods down because we had the conversation, Craig. So anything you have in terms of communication, that regard, go ahead. Yeah, I think the, the thing with between period communication is a lot of time it's extremely ineffective. You know, like the coach, like I, everyone thinks about the dramatics, like coach comes in, kicks a trash can, screams, yells, players don't actually listen. And then we go back and we just repeat the same thing and nothing really changes. Um, you know, similar to the idea of letting the players lead, you know, coming in with a question, but not like, oh, what went well, what didn't go well. Uh, you know, we need to have some constraints to our question that it shouldn't be as open, you know, like what went really good on our power play or whatever area that you want to turn their focus and attention to would be super valuable rather than doing it too large, which then takes us, you know, two minutes to get to really where we want to go. Um, so I think that's super important is asking the questions, but constraining them a little bit, um, making sure that when we do talk, it actually means something or if we're going into specific tactics, whatever it is. Um, I find in at least Columbus, Ohio area, <clears throat> coaches that I see tend to go in, spew like five or six things and then walk out and it takes up the entire time. Players don't have time to prepare themselves for the next period. There's too much information um, and it, it's just super ineffective rather than maybe give one or two things, have a conversation, maybe a specific area and then give the players the, the room back rather than kind of being more coach centric where you're controlling everything, you're holding the whole conversation, you're taking up the whole time. Craig, your point of being specific with the question, uh, I, doing HP1, HP of high performance evaluations, I ask coaches to uh, do this exercise of asking themselves, each other, what they liked, and then what do we have to do better generally? And they can go specific by zone, by special teams, whatever, if they wish, and go into the room and ask the players. The key is asking the players. Because if you don't ask them, you don't know what they think or understand. You can't coach them. You're, you're out of touch with them without listening to them. So you're constantly pushing yourself upon them to do it the way you want. And that's sort of where I come from on it. But thanks for that specific question. And I'm not sure at what level Tom's got five minutes between periods. Uh, the uh, or You've got a full time now between periods at U15. So I'm sure that how you, much you use questioning is going to be a factor. But whatever you're doing, it's working, so I don't question anything. Well, what we do is we first we give the first half of the break to the players, and then we go in the last half and go and ask, okay, what, ask them what they think. But I think one thing we do, and I picked this up uh, with uh, Terry Johnson and Willie, when I coach him with Terry, when he played in the American League, you know, they play so many games, he... I don't know, it's him or somebody up came up with the idea, go around the room and everybody say one thing that they're going to focus on or the team should focus on or whatever. And you go around the room and everybody, now, now their head's got to get there. And he said the first time they did it in the American League, the guys are kind of, oh, yeah. he says it's unbelievable. The, the next time they did it, they could, set, could tell that guys have thought about what they're going to say. <laughs> but we go, we go around the room before every game and sometime ask for one one word that you're going to focus on and all the players kind of clap and slap their their knees as they go around and uh, I think that kind of if you're if you weren't thinking about the game it gets you into that and also as a coach you want to hear the kind same kind of words that you've been preaching right so if they're saying all kinds of things that you've been trying to teach that's great if they're not then maybe you're not teaching that well so that's that's really work for us thanks tom peter 
Yes, sir. All right. I think this is working. So for me, having coached at prep and at the NCAA level, what I've done so has been effective. And really, just like what Tom was just talking to, before the game, we go around the room. Tell me one thing that you're going to do, just like he said. Uh, the only thing that I would always say would be, and it can't be score a goal, because everything else we do is going to be, the goal is going to be the byproduct, hopefully, of everything else that we do, that you're talking about doing here. So that was always very effective. And then between periods, prep, you get 18 minutes. College, you get 20. And that would be similar to what Tom was saying. I give them five minutes to just kind of relax, get their helmets off, maybe grab a squirt, get a drink, right? And then uh, go in. No more. Than, I'm not there for more than three or four minutes. Give me two things that we did well that period, just like was talked about. Gave us an answer for that. Then just before I left, and I tell oh, last thing, find one thing that you think that we need to improve upon. And then I would just walk out of the room and I would leave them probably at that point about be about eight to eight, eight minutes or so where they now as a group could say, OK, we've talked. We know what we, we're doing well. And then there would you'd, you'd get them talking. You get them talking. So guys weren't sitting there and saying, thinking like, oh, man, I had a terrible period. Oh, that was a bad shift I had. So they're out of their own heads, and they're now as a group trying to solve a problem. That was always uh, really effective for me. And one other thing we, I just want to mention, we don't, I don't like it. They have to say, I'm going to make good plays. They can't, they can't say, I'm not going to give the puck away. So we want them to phrase it in a positive way. Tim. And I, I guess I would add to, to both those thoughts, which are, are good ones. Um, I, I might caution to say you don't want your, you know, in, in some ways, I guess, you can, again, it's, it's about languaging. Uh, by, by saying, I don't want you to say you're going to score a goal because you want your players thinking that they want to score a goal. But if one of them did say, I'm going to score today, then you could say, well, what's one thing you're going to do to help you score a goal today? Because you want those thoughts in their heads. Um, and, and the same thing with Tom, I'm going to make good plays. Well, you want them to make good plays. So what's one thing you're going to do to help you make good plays? Have my head up, you know, pass the puck well, pass it crisply, protect it well, like, you want those thoughts in your head. So anyway, just. Um, yeah, no, I, I think that makes sense. I think not to speak for Tom, too, but for me, like we're going to score goals. That's something we've talked about prior. Like that's a given. Yeah, we're, we're going to score goals. So that's that's the reason we, we use that. It's something that uh, sometimes guys won't or girls won't know what to say. <laughs> I'm going to score a goal and everybody gets behind that. They're excited that they are, but it's not really tangible. So like to Tom's point, like more tangible things that uh, we want them to actually be able to do. If in fact they say they're going to score a goal. Yeah. And that's why you would direct. Okay. What, what's one thing you're going to do to help you score a goal? For sure. Yeah. yeah 100%. Craig, anything else on the, this topic? I, I love the, the focus on the process um, and, and less on like you need to try harder and more specifics. I, I love that. Like, OK, well, what are the specific areas that we need to try harder? Like try harder is just to abstract for players and being specific. I, I like where we're heading with that. And, you know, whether it be we need an F2 middle driver, um, you know, four check, we need F1 going to the puck quick. I think that's, uh, that's massive. And, and where I'd love to see people go is just be more specific in their coaching and, and not using blanket terms too often. Yeah. One thing just to follow up on that, Greg, one, one thing we, we always like to focus on that you know, we did with the Danish team and everything, you know, it, it, like you're saying, it, it's great that you want to work hard and you say you, well, I'm going to work hard today. So we put the focus on how am I going to know, as a coach, or how are your teammates going to know that you're working hard today? What are what am I going to see? 
what are your teammates going to see so that we know you're working hard? And then they might say, well, you know, I have my feet moving back checking. I'm going to have my feet moving on a four check. I'm going to win a battle for the puck. I'm never going to quit them. You know, then it turns their attention to the, the specific and the process instead of the generic. But what, what am I going to see? That that tells me I know you're working hard. Craig, I I call it pushing buttons. And one of the routines that I'm encouraging with girls hockey Calgary on the bench and doing it at spring camps where they have games and coaches are on the bench. And it's learning to provide specific feedback. Uh, we have a few coaches that yell from the bench and at what players should be doing. None of them are negative about what's going badly, but they're playing the game out loud instead of just playing the game and loud enough for the players of the bench to hear what the coach is thinking. So I'm trying to get them in the feedback. When players come off the ice and anything has been done well, provide a specific praise for the detail of what they did well and others should hear it and they should hear you identifying those good examples occurring as they happen on the bench for the teammates on the bench. I think that's a tremendous energy builder for a group is the use of not just positive general feedback, but positive specific recognition, which is teaching them what you appreciate and have been practicing. So uh, it's an art, it's a learning curve, and uh, I think we can all get better at that. And it just depends on the age group, the level of play, and your own understanding as a coach in terms of what you're capable of doing. So... That's my take on it. Craig, anything else? Can you? No, that was uh, beautiful. I love the conversation. I, th I think we're all in, in agreement on it. Yeah, no. one, 